Hello, Tungsten Miner here. Today I'm going to talk about Buildcraft power and power pipes and uh, the machinery that generates and uses power. Actually, not uses power. There's a lot of machines in Buildcraft that use power, so I'm going to save that for a future video. Starting off here, I've got a redstone engine. And while it looks like the other engines that Buildcraft provides to make power, it doesn't actually make power in the traditional sense. You can't move power into a power network, and uh, most machines won't even accept power from it directly. Uh, the one thing that it's most especially good for is powering these wooden transport pipes. So you might remember I used exactly this example to start off the very first Buildcraft video on transport pipes. So really, unless this is what you need to do, you can mostly ignore it. Moving on, Buildcraft was one of the very first mods that ever came out for Minecraft. And back at that point, it had its own notion of power. Well, eventually another mod came along, Thermal Expansion, that wound up having a more popular power system. It's a little bit easier for developers to use and had a lot of the other nice things and good machines and stuff like that. Uh, and so eventually having its own power system, that one won out. And now we use a power system for most of these mods, including Buildcraft, called Redstone Flux, or RF Power. And the units are all in RF units, and uh, a lot of the machines and things are all compatible across these mods, because now they're using a common power system. So when we look at a Stirling engine here, it's going to produce power in terms of RF by burning some kind of fuel. And any kind of fuel that works in a furnace will work in here. So basically, you can think of this as like, instead of a furnace that smelts items, it's a furnace that produces RF power. And when I throw this switch here, power is going to start streaming out through this wooden kinesis pipe. And if you've been following the series, uh, wooden pipes generally are extraction pipes, and the wooden kinesis pipe is no different. It extracts power from any source of power that it's attached to, in this case, the Stirling engine. That's moving into a cobblestone kinesis pipe, which is the cheapest form of pipe being formed, as most of these things are. Um, I'll just get the recipe, cobblestone, kinesis, pipe, here we are, uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted, I wanted to see the recipe, there we go, recipe is, get yourself a cobblestone pipe, which is any amount of cobblestone, any form of cobblestone with glass in between, will get you eight, and then merge that with some redstone, needing one per pipe, so you need eight redstone to take a whole batch of uh, cobblestone pipes and convert them, and that will get you your cobblestone kinesis pipe. Now, an important thing to know is that different pipes can move different amounts of power per tick. So, for example, if we just look up kinesis pipes in general in NEI, we see there's a whole bunch of different ones. The wooden kinesis pipe can take 320 RF per tick and extract it from a source, and our cobblestone can move 80 RF per tick. Now, it turns out this Stirling engine is producing very little power. Uh, yeah, not much at all. See, barely even making a dent in this uh, energy cell, even after all the time we've been talking. Uh, and so both of these pipes are more than sufficient to move the amount of power being generated. But this thing can draw 320 out of a source, but this can only accept 80. So we'd need four of these, you know, like one on each of four sides to take all the power that this thing can generate. So if I had all of these surrounding that wooden pipe there, uh, that would still only barely keep up with what that wooden pipe is able to generate. Okay, as you can see, this thing has gone from kind of a blue color to a green color as it's been working. And now as it's cooling off, because that's what happened, it's going to go back to blue. The hotter this engine gets, the more efficient it is and the more power it produces per tick. So it gets um, more and more, you know, stronger and stronger as it's hotter and hotter. And uh, eventually it will cool back off to the ambient temperature of 20 degrees C. It also has a small reservoir of power internally, so if you don't have a wooden kinesis pipe hooked up to it, it will be able to keep track of a little bit of power. And um, it also has a display showing you how much energy it's producing at any given time. So like I said before, this does not produce a lot of power. 10 RF per tick is very small. 
Um, and that's it for our Stirling engine. Next, we're going to look at a combustion engine. This is kind of like the combustion engine you might find in your car, or at least in principle it is. It accepts some kind of fuel. Um, Buildcraft calls it fuel. I happen to have another mod installed, uh, Pneumaticraft, that calls it gasoline, but it's the same stuff. And water. So this thing needs coolant, because as I turn it on and it starts producing power, first of all, you can see the beam of power going through is a bit thicker than what we had before. And if we look at our output, we can see it's producing 60 RF per tick. And as it heats up, it's eventually going to get to a point where it's so hot that it will destroy itself. Um, it used to do this explosively and violently, destroying blocks all around it. These days it just goes into a, uh, a frozen state. and You have to come and right-click it with a wrench in order to get it to be active again. But as it gets hotter and hotter, eventually it's going to start consuming water. And so I've got the tank full of water just because I dumped a bunch of buckets of water in there. But if you want to keep these running continuously and over long periods of time, you're going to have to have a steady supply of water. So it's worth looking into getting like a pump and hooking that up to a supply of water and using some of the output power perhaps from this engine to keep that pump going. You can see over here, we've already accumulated more power in this short time than we accumulated altogether in this one, because this is six times stronger an engine. Okay, over here, let's talk about some different kinds of pipes we have available. We've talked about the cobblestone pipe, and we noticed that the cobblestone pipe can transmit 80 RF per tick. I have next to it a stone pipe, which can transmit 160. Next to that is a quartz pipe, which can transmit 640. Next to that is a gold pipe, which can transmit uh, 2,560. And next to that is a diamond kinesis pipe, which can transmit 10,240 RF per tick. So here's the kind of grade of least powerful to most powerful pipes. Now, if you've got a combustion engine that produces 60 RF per tick, it doesn't matter. You can use cobblestone kinesis pipe because this thing only generates 60 RF per tick and this can take 80. So there's no particular reason to use more expensive pipes unless you're actually producing more power. So for example, if you had a bunch of combustion engines together, then you'd want to upgrade and have more power capacity. Um, but unlike other pipes, there's really no difference except the overall throughput. So coming back to here, I've got uh, all of these different pipes using emerald kinesis pipes. So emerald kinesis pipes, like emerald uh, transport pipes or emerald fluid pipes, are also extraction pipes, but they can extract a lot faster. So your wooden kinesis pipe can only extract 320 RF per tick, whereas your emerald kinesis pipe can extract 2,560 RF per tick. So that matches this gold kinesis pipe. Interestingly, this diamond kinesis pipe has the same problem that we had over there with that wooden and cobblestone combination. The cobblestone can only draw off 80, while the wooden can produce 320. So you needed four of these cobblestone pipes to draw off all the power which could be produced by the one wooden pipe. Same story here, except we're dealing with much bigger numbers. We're at 2,560 here and uh, 1024 over there. Um, or 10,240 over there. So uh, you need a bunch of these things extracting all at once, or a this can handle power dumped in from a bunch of different sources. I have here a bunch of energy cells that are all full, and they're all set up to have a uh, bit of circuitry underneath them, such that when I throw this switch, they will all start dumping power into their respective pipes. I have over here some energy cells which are all empty, and are all waiting to receive energy from these respective pipes. So let's turn this on and see what happens. Okay, lots of different things. Let's start over here. This can export over 2000 RF per tick. This can take 80. So right away we see this is not going to transmit as much power as this thing can pull out. So this thing has a blue line showing I'm pulling out a smallish amount of power. 
we know, of course, it's 80 because this is going to be limited to 80. It's blue because this pipe can handle much, much more power than just 80. So it's got a smallish blue thread through the middle saying, I am not moving very much power and I'm perfectly capable of moving more. Over here, we've got the same small thread, but it's red because this pipe is now maxed out. Can't handle any more power than is being transmitted right now. As we move over to stone, we can see the threads are both a bit thicker because stone handles a bit more power. And over here, a bit thicker still because quartz handles even more power still, but we still get maxed out because all of these draw less power or can transmit less power than the emerald pipe can push out. Here, the whole thing is red because the emerald and the gold are both matched up at 2560 RF per tick, which means this thing is pushing as much power as it possibly can, therefore it's red. This thing is accepting as much power as it possibly can, therefore it's red. And it's red all the way up to the end. Over here, we see the emerald pipe is red and full. It's a big fat cable, right? It's all the way, it's the full thickness of the pipe. Um, oh, rain, rain, go away. And the diamond pipe has still got a blue thread through it because the diamond pipe, as full as it is, is capable of taking even more power than the emerald pipe is pushing into it. And as we look over here, we can see these two are equal. Why are they equal? Well, because the emerald pipe is still the limiting factor. A lot like with the fluid pipes I talked about in the prior video, you can't push any more stuff through the pipe than the narrowest point. Since these are both the narrowest point in their respective pipe systems, they're going to be the limit. So we can move 2,500 RF per tick into these batteries because of the limitations of the pipe systems they're attached to. Now, if I had another energy cell, I could attach it to this and put twice as much power so that this would get fuller faster. Over here, this one's at a little bit over 2 million. This one's at about half a million. And this one's at about uh, not quite 300,000. Uh, so we can see these are moving things along as quickly as they can. And we can see the big difference because the limiting factor in each case is the, uh, the tail end of the pipe here. As compared to these two guys where the limiting factor is the input side of the pipe. Okay, moving on. This is a sandstone kinesis pipe, and if you've been following the series, you know sandstone generally means doesn't connect to inventories. So in this case, I've got a leadstone energy cell over here, which could accept power, but not from this pipe, because this pipe does not connect to inventories. I've got it connected to this one over here because it's cobblestone, so it'll connect from pipe to pipe, but it won't connect to an inventory. If I throw this switch, Turn on our signal. Oops. You always have to configure these things a little bit. Uh, oh, whoops, wrong way. Yeah. These energy cells are very nice because they're highly configurable, but they're not so nice because you have to configure them and get everything all hooked up correctly in order for them to work properly. Okay, whatever. <laughs> you can see it's working now. Um, Sandstone pipes are da, 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 the equivalent of, oh, that is a quartz pipe. Uh, where is my sandstone pipe? There it is. They're the equivalent of a stone pipe in uh, the amount of power that they can transmit. So here's, oh no, stone, 320. Oh, they're in between. Interesting. Okay, uh, I was mistaken. They're in between quartz, which is 650, and stone, which is 160. So they're that middle 320. Okay, anyhow, uh, moving on. Here we have an iron kinesis pipe. Now, unlike the iron pipes in transport pipes and fluid pipes, this doesn't actually change where the power goes. The power always goes to all sides of this thing. Uh, power is kind of an infinitely divisible resource. But what it does do is it limits the throughput rate. So if I switch this on, we can see the power coming out here is a very thin beam, and it goes through here, stays a very thin beam, but turns red, which means this thing is maxed out. Or, to put it another way, 
this thing is limiting the amount of power that can go through to something less than what this can provide and what this can accept. If I whack it with a wrench, it switches to 40 RF per tick instead of 20, which is its default starting place. And you can see the beam has got a little bit thicker. If I whack it again, it goes up to 80. The beam gets thicker still. I whack it again, 160, it gets thicker, 320. And now we know 320 is the limit here, right? So that t turns blue. This thing isn't maxed out anymore because this thing is providing the same amount of power that it can accept, so it's in a good spot. If I hit this again, 640, the beam doesn't change because this can't provide that much power. So now this is the limiting factor instead of this being the limiting factor. I can whack that up to 1280, but that's the limit. If I hit it again, it goes back down to 20. So this allows me to de dedicate a limited amount of power to certain tasks. Uh, and there are certain machines that uh, Buildcraft comes with, and certainly other m mods come with, that will draw a lot of power very, very quickly. And if you don't want them to get that much power, you can use an iron kinesis pipe to keep things to a minimum. Moving on. There's a kind of a funny mechanic when you have loops in your power pipes. Because remember, the power is going to try to go down all paths simultaneously. So if I start providing power, you can see things quickly get weirded out as they're going round and round and round that cycle. And even if I turn off the power now, even if I destroy the power source, there's still this like weird loop of power stuck in the stone pipe. So don't do that. It just makes things not work right. Okay, this is your final exam, <laughs> in a sense, for dealing with all sorts of different pipes all together. But don't worry, it's not an exam. I'm going to walk you through it. Okay, what's going on here and why is all this stuff uh, laid out? This is a refinery. This is the first device we're looking at from Buildcraft that actually uses the power that we've been talking about generating. And the thing it uses power for is to convert oil which I've got a bunch in this tank, into fuel, which I will eventually have in this tank. Why do I want to do that? Well, we talked about combustion engines before and said, oh yeah, we generate 60 RF per tick over here. Well, that's oversimplifying things. Combustion engines produce different amounts of power based upon what kind of fuel source you're putting into them. Oil produces a lot less power than fuel does. It's uh, Gosh, I don't even remember, but it's a whole lot less. It's so much less that you'd never, never want to burn oil if you can put together a refinery and make it into fuel. It's just so completely worth the process, even though it's a little complicated. So that's why we want to do that. We get way more RF power out of our combustion engines over time if we're burning fuel than if we're burning the oil directly. Uh, I'm not going to talk about in this video where you find the oil, but suffice to say, Buildcraft adds it to your world when the world is generated. So you can just walk around the world and go find it uh, and use a pump, perhaps, to uh, suck it all up and then uh, bring it around in pipes and bring it to where you need it. So the first stage of this process is we need to introduce some oil to the refinery. Uh, I've got a gate here with an autarkic pulsar. And so whenever it gets a redstone signal, it's going to turn on. So I'm going to flip my switch and start pumping oil into my refinery. And I believe it has a capacity of a total of eight buckets of uh, oil. And it will fill up one side, and then it will fill up the other side eventually. Like all these things, uh, it can be a little slow. There we go. But it can't work because the refinery requires power, and we don't have any power in the system right now. And we don't have any fuel, so we can't use our combustion engines to provide power. You know, you could just take a bucket's worth of oil and drop it in each of these things. But this time I decided, hey, I'm going to make a Stirling engine, fill it full of coal, and I'm going to use that to provide that initial kick of power necessary to start the refinery running. So here we go. Going to provide a uh, wooden kinesis pipe to a gold kinesis pipe into the back of the refinery, which is going to draw off the power. And very slowly we can see it's starting to have its little arms waggle about. 
but we're providing so little power, so little power, that this machine is barely even functional. It's trying, it's really trying, but this is just not enough power. So let's see if we can get our combustion engines into the mix here. I'm gonna start pumping that fuel out so that as this thing produces fuel, I'm gonna be pulling it out with my autarkic pulsar here, and I'm going to be depositing it into this tank. Now this tank has enough capacity to take the oil from this and completely fill itself up because you get one bucket of fuel for every bucket of oil. It's a one to one ratio. But we're gonna use some of this fuel. So I'm gonna start pumping the fuel out from that storage tank and bring it around to our engines. And now a little by little, and there's so little you can't even see the yellow sliver of it, we're gonna start filling up these combustion engines with our fuel. And we're producing fuel so slowly, we can't even really see it right now. But one thing we know about combustion engines, of course, is that once they get going, they get hot and you need to have water in there. So I'm going to uh, pump out some water from this spare water tank. And we can imagine there's a pump that fills this up someplace and keeps it going because you really are gonna go through a lot more water than this very rapidly. So I'm gonna throw this switch and turn on the water pump and start filling up our engines with water. Yeah, and little by little, we've got gas, we've got water. So now I'm gonna turn on both of these engines. One thing I probably should have mentioned earlier is every engine in Buildcraft requires a redstone signal to run. So you've been seeing me put um, levers on the backs of all these engines. You can provide redstone signals in any way you like, whether it's redstone dust connected to uh, you know some other source or just a big block of redstone, whatever you like, doesn't matter. But as I turn these two guys on, you can see now they're generating a lot more power using up that gasoline, but they're producing gasoline at such a faster rate now because this thing you can see is pulling in lots of power and those arms are whizzing up and down and they've gone that same green color, which is generally associated in Buildcraft with at the maximum temperature or running in a good state. And over here, we can see there's a steady stream of fuel coming out now, and a steady stream of fuel coming around to the two engines. And uh, hopefully before long, yeah, there we go, we can start seeing that buildup of yellow uh, gasoline in the bottom of our, of our engines here. And we've got our water tank going, so that's keeping them full of coolant, which may sooner or later run out, but that's all right. We're not going to have to talk much longer. Uh, so now we can see, oh, here's a case where this engine has burned up all its fuel. It turns out all the fuel is going to this topmost engine just because of the vicissitudes of how this pipe works. Uh, and they don't, they don't split things evenly. That's one of the things I was saying before about uh, item ducks especially is, you know, sometimes they come out even and sometimes not. So in this case, I'd probably have to find a better way to keep the fuel balanced between the two machines because all the fuel is gonna to go to this machine for the interim. So one thing I can do is just bust that pipe. And now all the fuel is gonna go into that guy for the time being. And if I get myself another golden fluid pipe, or a lot of them, uh, yeah, now I can uh, drop that in there and share the fuel again between the two. So in any case, um, the one thing I don't have in this system is a place for the excess power to go. So right now, this is all kind of a futile endeavor because I'm producing lots of fuel because, well, I'm producing fuel and that's the only thing this power is going to. So uh, next video, I'm going to get into what do you do once you've managed to set yourself up to produce some power in Buildcraft and uh, go through some of the interesting devices that Buildcraft provides. So if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to know when that next video comes out, hit subscribe, and I will talk to you later.